Hello, it's Ryan from 2MinuteTennis.net, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to get massive topspin on your forehand ground stroke. Now, this video is courtesy of Zen Rackets on Instagram. Make sure you subscribe to their awesome channel. I put their link in the description below. Uh, so this is such a great view of Karen Hachanov hitting an unbelievable topspin forehand. He's absolutely ripping the cover off this ball. And when you swing like this, you're going to get so much topspin. Why do you want to get topspin? Because when you can spin the ball over itself very tightly, like really high RPM, what that does, it helps bring the ball down into the court. So you can swing fast and aggressive, even hit higher over the net, and the ball still lands in. So I want to talk to you about one simple idea, and it is, and we can really use the context point in, under, in order to understand this. What we want is a great disparity between the direction the racket travels and the direction the strings point while you're striking the ball. And the greater the disparity, the more spin you're going to get on this ball. So what you want to do is you want to swing up with your strings if you can do it ever so slightly close. And I'll show you how to practice this. So when you are striking the ball, if you can have, and I'm going to draw a line here to show his racket right there. So that's the angle of his racket, right? So if we look at the angle that his racket is actually creating, so we're going to draw, give me one second. There we go. I'm going to draw a line that is pulling straight from his racket. So we're going to use that line right there. So that is his racket direction, the direction that his strings are pointing as he's striking the ball. But now let's look at the direction his racket's moving, right? So <laughs> this is so cool to see. So right there, amazing the difference in where his strings are pointing and where the rack is traveling. Now, I always have naysayers when I use this video because they're like, well, Ryan, it wasn't that severe of an upward swing prior to contact. Look, he's easily below the ball. So he's going to have to swing up. So it's very, very close. And the calculations are going to be close enough that we can make them and use them and have them be reliable. So when he's striking the ball, the direction his strings are pointing compared to the direction the racket is traveling, it's a 68 degree difference. Now, let's say that his racket was actually straight up and down, which is not wrong, by the way. Let's say his racket was actually straight up and down. That means his racket, we can actually use the bottom of the fence. His racket would be facing straight forward. That's if he was hitting with his racket straight up and down. So with his racket facing forward, if his racket was facing forward, and then he went up the way he was before, and he went up like this. You can see the difference. Instead of 68, he's at 60. So that tells us that his racket face was closed at contact around 8 degrees. Now, I'm going to show you in front of the camera right now how to replicate this. Now, to help me practice this, I've got the Topspin Pro. You know what to do. Check out my affiliate link in the description below, and I'll pin it in the first comment. It would mean the world to me if you got a Topspin Pro using my affiliate link for at-home practice. So thank you so much. All right. The disparity between the direction the racket travels and where the strings are pointing. Look, having your racket straight up and down at contact is not wrong, right? It's, it's not a wrong concept and, and you hit the ball like that, the ball's gonna go in. But if you start swinging incredibly fast and up to put a lot of topspin, that ball is most likely gonna carry out. Because of the friction of the strings, it's gonna pull that ball up and you're just not gonna get the spin you need. So, and that's what we saw from that 60 degree angle. That 68 degree angle, anytime there's a greater disparity between the direction the racket travels and where the strings are pointing, you're gonna get more spin and it's gonna help keep that ball inside the 70 foot, 78 foot long court. All right, so how do we do this? Well, first, if you have a Topspin Pro, you can think of having your racket tilted parallel to the shield. You can see that the way the shield is tilted and it's done that way on purpose so that you can match the shield as you're swinging up. That upward swing is what's going to be what puts the, all that spin on the ball. Well, first off, you can't just think about what to do when you're striking the ball. You want to know what to do prior to hitting the ball. So first, understand that spin craves speed. So when you're going to try to spin the ball, you want a fast racket. And the way to do that is to create a C swing. That's why it's so important that you're not taking the racket down low and then hitting, but rather making a circular swing. That way speed builds on speed and you really are swinging fast by the time you're contacting the ball. It's the difference between slow pitch softball and fast pitch softball. It's that same idea. 
The next idea, and this is critical, and boy is this a game changer for people on their forehands, is to tilt the strings down prior to contact and keep them down leading up to contact. I would say if there's any tip that has given people more topspin in their games if they typically don't get topspin, it isn't swinging low to high. That's not a tip that actually helps people typically get topspin. What really gives people topspin is the key of closing their racket face when they are lower than the contact height. When you tilt your strings down, think of it as a mirror and you're pointing the mirror and the reflection of the ground is in the mirror. That's the definition of closing your racket. When you have your racket closed, you are going to have a chance to have incredible and massive topspin because you can just have the feeling that your strings are staying closed as you're swinging up the back of the ball. Spin is created when your strings face one direction and your racket travels a completely different direction. I can use uh, this ball right here. Here's a spin ball, like a foam ball for the kids. So I can bump the ball up and you can see there's really no spin on this ball. There's very little rotation. And it's because my strings are facing up and my racket is traveling up. So since they're matching, there's no difference. So there's not gonna be any spin. But watch this. All of a sudden I'm getting a lot of spin now. Why? Because my strings are facing up, but my racket's traveling to the side. So now I can really get a lot of spin on that ball and that ball rotates and has high RPM. So if you're looking for a ton of control, on your forehand ground stroke. You want to be able to dip the ball to someone's feet. You want to be able to make the ball jump up to your opponent's backhand, just like Nadal will do to Roger Federer. You've got to learn how to go from below the ball to above the ball with the strings ever so slightly closed. And by having the Top Spin Pro, and I truly mean this, you can just practice this over and over again. What it feels like not to hit the tennis ball. Don't hit the tennis ball. Spin the ball. Have the strings a few degrees closed, swing up as you're hitting the ball and you're gonna get that massive topspin. Now, most phones, when you film yourself, and you should be filming yourself all the time, to, to you know, cross-reference what you're seeing yourself do versus what you're learning here on Two Minute Tennis on YouTube, most phones have a slow motion setting. So when you open up your phone settings and it says, oh, video, photo, keep scrolling because one of them says most likely slow motion. So film yourself in slow motion. Look at yourself and see, okay, are my strings slightly down? Slightly, you can't hit like this, the ball's gonna go on the ground. You cannot have your racket face 45 degrees close. It's just not, you can, it's just that ball's never going over the net. You've gotta make sure that you're, unless you're one foot from the net and making contact with the ball, like way up above your head. You've gotta make sure that the racket is only a few degrees closed as you're doing this and swinging up and use the Topspin Pro and film yourself in slow motion using the Topspin Pro just making this move. I will add one thing when you do this you might even feel the desire to finish up ab above your head the way we saw Hachanov the way we see Nadal doing that and again that is not wrong that is just a continuation of such an upward swing. So work on your forehand work on creating that disparity between where the strings point and the direction the racket travels and if you do there's no doubt you're gonna gain confidence, win more matches, and play much better tennis. This is Ryan Reedy from 2MinuteTennis.net. You got this.